Type 2 diabetes is on the rise in younger adults, with more students being affected now more than ever. Investigators say a child playing with a cigarette lighter started blaze to this apartment. Members of the Senate Finance Committee say paying for Medicaid will be their priority in developing the state's $5.6 billion budget. Our Angela McCurry shows how Palmetto Health Richland is being affected by its overload of patients. The noise here is very minimal. Jim Hamilton, who is the volunteer manager here at the airport, agrees. Enrollment is up at this Columbia Jewish Day School, and administrators say it's the low student-teacher ratio that's attracting more and more students from the Midlands. Reporting from the State House Complex, Kimberly Gill, Carolina News. The big game lottery is the hot ticket in town. Many South Carolinians have been standing in lines for hours for their chance to win $325 million. Here's the Brenda Smith has been working hard since 6 o'clock this morning, so hard that her fingers are numb from ringing up so many of the big game tickets. They get, you know, like on the verge of a blister, you know, rubbing so much. Some South Carolinians are so serious about winning that they camped out for tickets. So when I came into the parking lot this morning at 6 o'clock, we had about eight or nine cars with people, full groups of people just snoring their little heads off. Hundreds of South Carolinians are filling in lottery tickets. They want to win big, and winning big means coming to Georgia to play the big game. <laughs> Why did you come here to play the lottery instead of playing in South Carolina? 325 million. It speaks for itself. The reason I'm playing down here is because South Carolina don't have the most to draw yet. I can come down here and have a chance to win a couple million, or rather win a couple hundred, and this is not worth it. Whether it's worth it or not. Stop selling tickets tonight. 1040. 1045. Until South Carolina can take part in the multi-state lottery, they'll be losing big bucks to Georgia. Kimberly Gill, Carolina News. A new medical study has proven that by simply taking one baby aspirin a day can reduce the risk of getting colon cancer by 19 percent. Mike Towns is receiving chemotherapy for colon cancer and says he had heard about taking aspirin for some forms of cancer when he was first diagnosed. About a year ago they had come out with some preliminary things. They had mentioned that that would do it. They had also mentioned that would also do for your heart. But do some medical professionals really believe that taking one aspirin a day like this one will reduce the risk of colon cancer. I think it would be a wonderful um, um, assistance in, in trying to reduce the uh, risk of colon cancer. Dr. Patricia Cook is an associate nursing professor at the University of South Carolina, Aiken. She was also aware of the research and says scientists have speculated that aspirin protects against this type of cancer. You should always speak to your doctor before taking aspirin or starting any other medical regimen. It's not right for all people, as for Mike Towns, his cancer is so advanced that he doesn't take aspirin, but he has changed his way of life. The dosage that is recommended is 80 milligrams, which translates to one baby aspirin. Kimberly Gill, Carolina News. As a world watched Israeli tanks enter the West Bank this weekend, both Bethlehem and Ramallah are proving to be two primary targets as Israel expands its military operations. The attack in that region brings us to the question of how people with ties to the Middle East feel about the crisis. Stephen Turner, who is the executive director of the Colombian Jewish Federation, says though he sides with Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, he believes both sides should work hard to make peace. And I really cry for the Israelis and I cry for the Palestinians because I know that so much could have been gained by the two of them working in cooperation. Abdullah Alisa, who is a Muslim student at the University of South Carolina, feels that both Israelis and Palestinians, as well as the United States, needs to work together to make peace. Just to, to stop the, you know, the slaughter of a human being and to propose a peace plan that's guaranteed for everybody in the region dignity, hope, a peace for everybody. Though these are two very different people with different views and different cultures, both are praying for the same peace in the same part of the world. Kimberly Gill, Carolina News.